Welcome to Microsoft Excel Tips and Tricks. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I am here as your host today from TechSoup. And we will also be joined by Todd Sweetser from Microsoft. I am a Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, having been with the organization since 2008. And prior to that, spent about a decade working for small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I was a user of TechSoup services as the accidental techie at small organizations. You, we are also joined today by our Microsoft Excel Pro, Todd Sweetser, who is a partner, partner technology strategist with Microsoft. And he will be walking us through some of the new features and really cool things that you can do with Excel, along with some neat shortcuts that you can use, uh, whether you have the current version, and some of them apply to past versions as well and to show us where you can find more learning resources to further maximize how you are using and leveraging Excel in your day-to-day -day office use. Also assisting with chat, you'll see Patricia Stone from Microsoft and Ali Bazdikian from TechSoup. You may also see Kevin Lowe from TechSoup. Ali is a, an interactive video and events producer here at TechSoup, and Kevin is a program manager who is a real tech expert on our end. So we will do our best to answer questions, but we do have a really big crowd today. We are expecting around 500 people to be on. So I'm going to apologize in advance because I assume we may not be able to get through everyone's questions in the course of an hour. Excel is a big product and a lot of different ways to use it. So we'll do our best to point you to additional resources where you can get those questions answered uh, if we aren't able to answer them today. So a look at today's agenda. We'll do a quick introduction of TechSoup. We'll take a couple of minutes just to poll where you are at currently with using Excel, and that will help inform our discussion as we move forward. We'll look at how to get started quickly, including a demo. Uh, we'll look at some keyboard shortcuts. We'll look at data visualization tips, how to use and share Excel data with others, and some advanced capabilities. And so we may not spend a ton of time on the advanced stuff depending on how you respond to those polls. And then we'll have just a couple of minutes toward the end so that those of you who either don't have Excel currently or are running an older version and would like to upgrade to a newer version can find out how to access the donated Office 2013 or Office 365. So TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are working towards the day when every nonprofit on the planet can access the technology, resources, and knowledge they need to operate at their full potential. We have been around since 1987 and have helped more than 200,000 charitable organizations in more than 60 countries around the world. We do this in a variety of ways from events like these free webinars that we offer to help you learn more about the technologies you already have on hand, to also offering products in our catalog that are donated by consultants or products like Windows 8.1 or the latest QuickBooks 2014. Find this and more on TechSoup's website at TechSoup.org. So now let's jump us into these poll questions. So go ahead and click on one of the radio buttons on your screen to let us know what version of Office you are currently running. And if I didn't include an option, for example, I meant to include Office 365 on this list, and Office Online, but in the wee hours of the morning I forgot. So if you are running those, go ahead and chat into the window to let us know. This will help us have a better idea of what you are using currently and whether or not uh, you need more info or links to resources about prior versions. I have a couple of people chiming in saying that they are on Office 365. That's great. And we will talk a little bit about Office 365 and some of the great inter integration um, and sharing capabilities that come with using tools like Excel uh, with Office 365. I have some people saying Office 2013 with Office 365, Mac 2011. So great. Thank you so much for letting us know which ones you are using. It looks like about half of you are using Office 2010, and about a third uh, or 30 percent are using Office 2013, and not too many are using Office 2003 or earlier, which is good because you know, today's event we will be looking at this on the Office 2013 product because that is the current version. Um, and we will also have a couple of minutes to look at it through Office 365's lens. Um, 
But we will point you to some resources for those of you who are on 2010 as well. And some of the things that Todd will cover will also uh, be applicable to those of you on 2010. And one more quick question before I hand it off to Todd. What level of expertise do you currently self-identify having with Excel? So this is just your assessment of yourself. Do you consider yourself a basic user uh, where you can manage simple spreadsheets but not necessarily create them or connect them to one another? Do you consider yourself intermediate where you are pretty good at using charts and, and using formulas and how the different cells can interact with one another? Do you consider yourself an advanced user uh, where you are doing business intelligence with your data, for example? Or are you really not sure how to even self-assess because maybe you are brand new to the product? Let me give just another few seconds that everybody has a chance to weigh in here. And if there is something that you want to let us know that is not an option on your screen, again, feel free to chat into us to let us know. I just give 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I'm going to show the results here, but you can keep clicking. Um, so Tracy asks, where do pivot reports fall? You know, I would say that's probably intermediate to advanced. Depending, so I, you know, I think either of those could be right because pivot pivot reports could be intermediate, but they could also be really complicated. <laughs> so, kind of depends. This is just to get a general idea. So, let's go ahead and bring our primary presenter on the line so that we can have him tell us a little bit more about what he does and take us through using Excel and showing us some of those great features and tips. Welcome Todd. We're so glad to have you. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you Becky. Thank you TechSoup uh, for, for inviting me and, and, and hosting this event. Definitely have a, have a great large crowd with a, a good mix uh, of levels. Uh, hopefully you'll get a good amount of help out of today's information. Some of it may be a little more basic for some of you, while hopefully some of it will be uh, information you may not have heard of on a more advanced scale. Uh, as far as my background, just so everybody understands my role, uh, as mentioned, I'm a partner te technology strategist here at Microsoft. Uh, my primary role is to work with our Microsoft partner community uh, to make sure that they are prepared and, and engaged uh, with customers and, and understand the product from a technical point of view. Uh, so I, I work right alongside many of our partners that work alongside and assist many of, uh, many of the nonprofit uh, and library organizations out there that TechSoup also works with. So uh, there's definitely a lot, of, uh, a lot of places where we all work together. With that, I'll go ahead and get started. A uh, quick, very high-level agenda. I'm going to go over a very high-level uh, talk about how the, how, uh, how the game is changing uh, around data, uh, and, then talk, and then start getting into the tips around how Excel uh, can be used to, to help keep that data engaging and usable to a wide variety of people across your organizations. And then lastly, we have a slide and uh, some information with links uh, on how to get further information of everything that, we've, that we're going to be talking about about today. So in terms of the game always changing, I mean these, these uh, necessar aren't necessarily 100% focused on Excel, but more about uh, the overall architecture and what people are using these tools, Excel included, uh, out of the Office uh, suite, uh, and, and using them to engage and build their organizations. A lot of people are moving data to the cloud, and some things that I'll show today actually uh, discuss and will demonstrate how you can actually store and share and, and manipulate information in a cloud environment uh, using familiar ex Excel platform and using familiar Excel themes and, and, and usability capabilities. <clears throat> also in respect to uh, the mobile devices, obviously that's uh, continuing to skyrocket at a tremendous pace. And we see many, many organizations having a wide variety of devices Devices, everybody having at least two or three different devices to access their data on a daily basis. Everything from phones, mobile devices, tablets, up to the laptops and so on. Uh, and hopefully everybody understands. I'm not going to show a lot of mobile stuff today, but uh, there's definitely options, uh, the way to access data 
in conjunction with our cloud services to access Excel spreadsheets uh, on mobile devices. Uh, of course, Office uh, for iPhone, Office for iPad, which was more recently announced, is available, uh, as well as uh, available to access Office on a variety of other mobile devices, our Windows Phone devices and tablets and so, and, and so on. Uh, and then using that data uh, to compete uh, and, and win, uh, and, and this slide says customers, and maybe it's more about you know just those folks that you guys want to engage with as as nonprofit and library organizations to make sure that the data is appropriate for them. Uh, and a lot of it, the key word there is data, and that's where Excel comes into play. Uh, the, the amount of data that exists out there is obviously tr growing, just like the, the usage of mobile devices, uh, at a tremendous pace. And to be able to access and use data both that you manipulate and own within your organizations, as well as even data externally, uh, can, can, make, uh, can make your organization much more powerful and much more complete with what they're presenting. <clears throat> so, I mean, and it comes down to what, what organizations really need. They need to be able to do more with less resources. Uh, so when we say more, less resources, you want to be able to get the most out of any investments that you have uh, and be able to do it wherever you are, again, with the idea of the mobile, uh, the mobile environment around us now, to be able to actually uh, access that data, manipulate it, and work with it be, um, in a plane or, or sitting out in a park or sitting on a beach uh, in Cancun or wherever you may be, but be able to engage and work with it uh, wherever you are using whatever device you have, and making sure that you're getting the results that you're looking for based on that data. So that's kind of a, a high-level overview uh, of, of, of just Excel and Office uh, and the environment at play here. And let's start talking about now how you can actually use Excel uh, to, to actually stay ahead of the game. And this is where we're going to start talking about different tips and different ways of, of using some of the different capabilities uh, within the Excel platform. <clears throat> so kind of starting out with Excel uh, 2013, uh, the idea of being very uh, making it very easy to get started uh, using Excel. And when I say get started, I mean being able to open it up and, and, and start using the type of uh, spreadsheet that you want to use right away, be it one that you've already uh, engaged with and you want to uh, reopen, or selecting a new one. Uh, and you'll see with uh, Excel 2013, I mean, there, there's ways of doing this in previous versions of Excel, but 2013 has really gone to the next step to make it very easy to uh, either uh, search from a, a recently used list items all the way up to uh, searching for templates uh, that are out there on the public domain, uh, and as well as searching for older files. Uh, so I'll show you this in just a second here. Uh, but then probably more importantly, uh, one thing that I like to, uh, to, to learn and utilize, just coming from my background, which comes all the way back to, to mainframe and green screens and using function keys, uh, using keyboard shortcuts. Uh, Excel uh, is a very, very powerful tool. There's all kinds of ways to interact with Excel, uh, as everybody probably well understands. And one of the, one of the nicest ways of getting things done quickly is, is learning uh, shorthand keystrokes in order to uh, accomplish very common tasks uh, within the application, in this case Excel. And there is definitely no shortage of keyboard sh shortcuts available with Excel, uh, and including, including a few examples here. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is actually go into a, a demonstration and actually uh, show some of this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share out my desktop. <clears throat> so everybody should be able to see my desktop. Uh, if they haven't, they'll see it in a quick second here. Uh, so this is my uh, uh, Windows 8.1 desktop, uh, and I've got Excel uh, running, and I've got it uh, uh, pinned to my taskbar below. Uh, hopefully everybody can see that. A few quick items to note with taskbars. Uh, you, know, you can put your cursor over it and see a quick image of that current uh, document that or is already open. Uh, something else that many people may not be aware of, you can right-click and you can actually get a list right away of a recently used uh, list of uh, various uh, documents that you've already worked with. You can also pin these. So I can click here and have it pinned, and it will always be available. So if these are spreadsheets that I work with on a repetitive basis, I can go right away, click on Demo Sheet, and actually open up um, uh, that particular sheet uh, without having to, to go through the whole file open process. Right now what I'm going to do real quick is, is show uh, the item we talk, I talked about earlier uh, in respect to when you initially open Excel without going directly to a particular spreadsheet. 
You'll see a few things here. Number one, you'll see on the left the recently uh, opened items. So I can, it'll keep a list, and this list will continue to grow uh, and, and be uh, fully viewed depending on, on what resolution you have, of course. Uh, a, a long could be a fairly long list of things that you've recently opened within Excel. Something else with 2013, just so everybody understands, you'll notice, by the way, within this demonstration environment, I should mention, uh, my name is Karen Berg. I may have a low voice for a Karen Berg, but I am Karen Berg within this demonstration demonstration environment. But you can see I'm actually logged into Excel. With the 2013 platform, you can actually log into the Office platform. And what that affords you is now when I move around from machine to machine, I can log into that machine and this information will follow me. Uh, so if I show you right now, if I go to Switch Accounts and go to My Actual Account, uh, it's actually going to change. The recently used list item will change to be associated with, uh, with that person. Uh, and of course, uh, all my current templates, some of the ones that I've recently searched on will show up. I can switch back uh, and go back to the other one. So in this case, if you're on a machine that multiple users use, uh, this, uh, this makes it quite easy for each user to be able to log into Office on that machine. And this is in Excel I'm showing you, but this is actually across the board with Word and PowerPoint as well. And of course, uh, you can see all the different templates that uh, are available right from the get-go, and you can search uh, for templates. So if I wanted to search for uh, you know, certain calendars, I can click on the calendars item, and it will search for all the different calendars right there. So I can quickly open and create uh, a spreadsheet based on any one of these just by double-clicking on it and opening it up. It will download that, and right away uh, a template wasn't on my local machine is now available to me, assuming I'm on the Internet, and uh, be able to download and start working with. So with that, I'm going to jump over to uh, another spreadsheet that I've already got populated uh, so I can go through a demonstration of some of uh, the shortcuts I wanted to share now. There's way more shortcuts than we definitely have time for today, uh, but I wanted to go through a few uh, that, that I see uh, can be helpful and, and are more common. Before I'll do that, I'll mention real quick here, of course, the ribbon across the top. Uh, many of us were already using a version of Office that used the ribbon, so you're probably pretty familiar with it. Uh, and that, will, that continues in the 2013 platform. Uh, you'll see there's definitely a variety of items under each uh, tab. There will be some tabs here that you may not see, uh, and I'll talk about these a little later in the presentation, Power Query, Power Pivot, and so on. Uh, but they can be enabled in yours if you're using the professional version of, uh, of Excel. So coming to shortcuts, uh, you, number one, you've got uh, this the particular spreadsheet is uh, you know, a pretty basic spreadsheet. has a few formulas on it, uh, not a lot to it. One of the first things that uh, I wanted to highlight from a shortcut point of view is the ability to insert a date, uh, to be able to actually quickly insert a date using a keyboard shortcut. So I've already pre-populated this field to the left uh, with, with, with just a quick label. Uh, and on the right-hand side, by the way, I did this at the last minute, but just to make it easier so everybody sees what I'm doing, um, the different uh, control functions that I'm going to be using today. So you see, if I, uh, because obviously you can't see these when I'm, uh, <laughs> you can't see me typing, so control uh, 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 semicolon will automatically populate that field with the date. So no matter where I am, I can just uh, go to this field, hit control semicolon, and it will actually populate with that date. Of course, Control Z. I can hit Control Z, and it'll undo my last function. So that'll always be available. Another very common one that uh, probably many of you are familiar with. So similar to date, uh, I can change. I can also insert the time, and that's using a Shift uh, Control Shift uh, colon. Uh, and again, it's going to populate that uh, particular field with the time quickly and easily. I can, uh, whenever I need to put the current time in a field, just Shift Control uh, colon will populate that field. Uh, with that time. Now there is another way, uh, and this way is not necessarily uh, a keyboard shortcut, but I want to just mention it. Many may be familiar with it because the idea of using formulas is definitely something uh, that Excel is very powerful at. But you can also insert the, the time and date uh, using a formula. And the formula is just by typing in a cell, type uh, equals now uh, and the, and the open and close colons, and you can see that it uh, automatically populated that field with the time and the date. Now probably the key thing to note is that when you click on that uh, particular item, you'll see that it's actually populating it with, uh, with the actual, uh, 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 pardon me, the actual, uh, uh, 
formula. So uh, and I accidentally cleared that. Uh, so the formula is always going to be there. So it's always going to actually show that if you ever, anytime you refresh this spreadsheet, it's going to populate it with the actual uh, current date and time. So this is something you want to use uh, not necessarily as often as, as the other one where you want a flat particular date and time. Uh, but if you want it to be dynamic, uh, it, it is another way of actually populating and, and producing the date and time. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is just when you want to actually edit a field. There's multiple ways of even editing a field. Uh, if I click just once in a cursor, you'll notice that it's not in edit form yet. In order to edit it, uh, you can uh, enable editing a few ways. Number one is just by double clicking in the field. So if I double click, I can now edit. Another way is actually going up uh, to the function bar uh, and starting to edit it up, up there. Uh, and then finally, another way that you can edit it is using the F2 button on the keyboard. Uh, just like everything with many Excel or Microsoft solutions, there's always many ways to do a particular um, uh, function or workflow. And this is just an example of that. Um, another item that I, that I think is pretty slick and nice to show is, is what happens if you want to expand out uh, through columns or through rows a series of dates or, or days uh, and things like that. Uh, and that's very easy to do. If, uh, if you look at this particular field, I've got the Monday in there. If I actually hold the control key down, and you'll notice as I go down to the lower right-hand corner, a little plus sign appears. And I can just expand that out. It will actually uh, put out uh, all of the days and fill in the series, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, right there. Uh, I didn't have to actually manually edit all of those. I just had to uh, go in here and change this to fill series uh, versus copy cells. And the same thing can be done here. Uh, if I just drag this down without holding control, it will actually automatically do the series uh, quickly uh, without actually even copying. Uh, so you can see it actually put the full dates out, uh, put the days out. I didn't have to actually do any of that manually and populate those fields in any type of manual, or ba manual basis. So another way to, to quickly take care of uh, uh, populating fields with dates and, and or days and so on. Uh, Another item people sometimes wonder about is how do I want to clear fields that aren't necessarily connected but a bunch at the same time. And just like a lot of things in, in, in Windows and in Office, that's just a matter of holding the control key and selecting multiple items at the same time. I can select multiple fields at the same time and then hit delete, and you'll see that they all got deleted uh, at the same time. I can then hit undo, of course, and bring them back. So it's another way of using the control key. Now what if I wanted to highlight a particular entire column within, uh, within a sheet of data? I can highlight just one item, and if I want to highlight this entire column, I can use Control Space, and it will actually highlight that entire column. Uh, along the same lines, if I wanted to highlight and uh, to, to copy perhaps or to or make some changes to an entire row, Control-9, uh, and actually that one does the hide. I went, went one too fast. It's Control-Shift-Space. Uh, we'll actually select the entire, uh, uh, the entire spreadsheet without the headers, by the way. Uh, so uh, Control-Space uh, to actually um, uh, shift Control-Space, I'm sorry, to highlight the entire uh, spreadsheet. Uh, and probably the uh, last one I wanted to show here has to do with, uh, let's say you have a sheet that's more complex and has a lot of formulas, but you want to view all the formulas at once. That's where you can actually uh, hold down the control key and hit the tilde, the tilde key, which is uh, the squiggly line at the top left of your keyboard. You notice when I hit the control and hold that, it actually uh, expands out, but it shows all the formulas that are within that spreadsheet. That now one that I entered earlier, uh, the sum formulas, I can hit it again and, and turn that off. But if you need to get quick access at all of the formulas on your spreadsheet, another way to get quick access to that. So with that, I'm going to actually uh, jump back uh, into uh, the actual deck. Uh, and go over some other slides uh, before we get uh, further on to some more demoing. I will be getting back to demoing, of course. So now I should, everybody should be able to see the deck. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about data visualization. This is kind of taking data to the next level. Uh, being able to actually graphically uh, view and consume the data, which is important when you're uh, sharing the data with people that are outside of uh, your, maybe your normal audience, and the way to expand the usage of that data. Uh, and there's a few different ways you can do it. 
uh, quickly and easily. Uh, and the, these, uh, everything I talked about earlier uh, it can also apply to previous versions of Excel. A lot of the control functions um, are, are there for the previous versions of Excel. Uh, this one here, instant data analysis, is something that's new with, uh, with 2013. Uh, but there's a quick analysis lens that allows you to instantly convert that data into some type of chart uh, or a table in very few steps. And you can get a preview of how that looks uh, and start uh, getting an idea of how it looks before you even fully uh, commit to it. Uh, so it's a great way of getting started and starting to share data uh, in a visual way to make it easy for other people outside of uh, the normal consumers of the data to understand. Another, way to, uh, another new way that you can actually help populate data within a sheet is something called flash fill. Flash fill will actually detect uh, what you're doing based on data in other columns within that spreadsheet. Uh, this is something that historically people may have had to do uh, uh, on a more manual basis or by uh, writing their own scripts in order to do that. Uh, and I'll show you uh, how that works in just a second. Another item is uh, kind of expanding upon uh, what I talked about earlier, but actually creating a chart that's right for the data that you're about to present. Uh, and that's, this is using the recommended charts function that's in the 2013 client. Uh, and what this will do is uh, quickly give you uh, an idea of what the most suitable and, and, and what, what you know, the Excel technology team thinks it would be the best looking chart for the type of data that you're trying to present. They're based, uh, it bases on the patterns within the data, and it will actually, again, show an actual live preview of the charts as they would, as they would show once you actually commit to it without, uh, before you fully commit to actually uh, uh, creating the actual chart. You can actually show that, uh, pick the chart that shows the insights that you want. And then you can go to the next level where you can uh, have more control over fine tuning and, and and, and, and cutting out and, and adding uh, areas to the chart that make sense for what you want to actually show. On the ribbon itself, you'll see there's uh, uh, some changes on the chart ribbon, uh, including uh, a lot of related types of charts that are grouped together. Again, uh, the ribbon technology uh, makes it much easier, easier from a visual standpoint uh, for people to actually consume these and understand how they use and get started with them, and, and they've continued to enhance it within the 2013 client. And then kind of lastly, in respect to this, is, is data labels and being able to actually uh, make the data labels uh, much more richer and refreshable from other data within the spreadsheet. Uh, and it can be basically part, uh, connected to a pivot that uh, will uh, reflect the data as it changes. A few other quick points with Excel uh, 2013. Uh, each workbook is its own window now. Uh, some of the previous and uh, earlier releases, uh, they were all within the same window, uh, with the, win the, the, the actual program window, and you wouldn't be able to have multiple sheets open at the same time and see them on different monitors. Now you can do that. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the ability to integrate with apps. There's external apps. There's an entire app store community out there uh, for office applications. Um, uh, and, and Excel is definitely part of that, where lots of uh, third-party organizations have created applications that you can easily plug into and use and consume within Excel uh, as you're using it. Let's go back uh, to the demo. I'm going to open up Excel, and this is something that everybody uh, can to do themselves to kind of get an idea how these functions work, uh, some of the functions that I just talked about in this demonstration. If you open up Excel 2013, you'll notice uh, usually near the top is this item called Take a Tour. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is a template that allows you as, you, uh, as a user to learn these, these, uh, these functions uh, in re in related to analysis and, and charting and so on uh, quickly and easily. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just use the same tool just so, you can, just so you can see that. So flash fill, I talked about flash fill earlier. This is where you have a, a column of data, and everybody's going to have large columns of data that they want to manipulate and work with. But maybe you want to actually just use a component that's in another column uh, and pull that out. In this case, what I'll do is I'll type in Nancy. And if you look at the first column, uh, the email address, Nancy is there as well. Uh, and then I'm going to type in and start typing in Andrew. And you can see I, ha I just pressed the first few letters. And it, uh, looking at the previous column or any other column within the spreadsheet, in this example, the previous column, you can see it's pulling that data from that column. 
and automatically populating the rest of that column. If I wanted to actually commit to this, uh, all I need to do is hit Enter. And now it actually populated the rest of that column with everything in the first column uh, up to the period. Uh, so basically it's automatically looking at the cutoff point uh, of that particular uh, uh, component within that email address and knows that that's what I want to use in that column. So you can see how this could definitely speed up time uh, that you spend populating additional columns when it, ne when it needs to pull something out of a previous column. Uh, and it does that uh, with the intelligence built in. Uh, now there are definitely ways of, of working with it. I can accept. I can uh, select all the change. I can undo it. Uh, and sometimes there may be some fields that maybe uh, don't have the exact correlation, but it makes it much easier to get the bulk of the information and then uh, move on and just make a few minor changes. Now let's look at the quick analysis function that I talked about a moment ago. Uh, this is where I've got uh, a another uh, spreadsheet here with a series of data, and I want to actually uh, do some quick analysis on it. So I can highlight that entire uh, uh, particular data set. And if I put my cursor over uh, that button on the lower right, this is that quick analysis, and you can see I also can do Control Q. If I click on that, it's going to pop up uh, this quick uh, quick way of, of getting access to some other functions, uh, such as uh, adding data bars. You can see if, as soon as I put my cursor over that, it actually populates the live data with the live look and feel, not just a demo of it, uh, of what it would look like using data bars. So you can get an idea of which items ha have higher amounts, which items have lower amounts. Do the same thing with color scale. Uh, using icons, uh, higher, lower, and so on. Uh, I could look at charts. I can uh, look at uh, totals and automatically uh, add some total functionality, as well as tables. And then another one uh, that can be pretty popular, spark lines. Uh, so I can have a column next to it that uh, has the actual spark lines associated with it. And if I wanted to uh, go ahead and use this, I just double click on it. And then that is automatically added to that. Uh, so you can uh, see how easy it was to actually accomplish tasks that historically, I mean, it's not uh, ha has been more challenging to do uh, just due to the fact that you had to go to insert. And you, it was multi-steps. This way, uh, one or two steps, one or two clicks, I'm, I'm accomplishing the similar tasks. And kind of going to the next step, uh, on this one, uh, we're going to actually show what it looks like using that recommended charts functionality. Now I could use the quick analysis, but uh, let's say I'm not sure what would be the best chart. So I can click on recommended charts, and right away it's going to actually show me uh, the different recommended charts that it thinks, uh, that Excel thinks, that would be best suited for the type of data. A stacked bar chart, uh, a scatter chart, so it will actually show me. And, and again, it's not showing me you know, dummy data on this image. It's showing me data from the actual data that's in the spreadsheet uh, that's behind us. So if I select one and click OK, now that chart is there. It's available. I can start working with it. And then if I needed to actually start adding some filters, this is where you can get more granular. I can choose uh, items that I want to highlight or, or remove. Uh, uh, quickly and easily using a, using this filter um, uh, interface right uh, right there, uh, so uh, all these things kind of gets gets you to that point. So with that, I'm going to jump back. Let's see what we're doing on time. Get, get, uh, getting uh, a little short, so I want to definitely cover a few more topics. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, sharing data, uh, I want to show a few things on on how to share, and then a quick demo of how to create a survey on the fly. Uh, so I'm going to go through these slides quickly here. Uh, hopefully everybody uh, is familiar. If not, I'm introducing you to something called OneDrive for Business. Do note that there is also OneDrive the consumer offering, uh, but OneDrive for Business is something uh, that, uh, that uh, you as nonprofits and library organizations can acquire through TechSoup as part of Office 365. Uh, so it's a, a much more secure enterprise uh, solution for saving uh, files and data up into a cloud storage environment. Uh, you can access them when you're online via a browser, but you can also continue to work with them with the desktop clients, which I'll show you in a moment. And probably the biggest thing to note here is that uh, uh, 25 gigabytes uh, of storage today uh, for any user that, that, that goes with this, it's actually going to move to one terabyte shortly for all users. So it's a, a huge amount of storage uh, for users across the board. 
Uh, then using that same tool, you can actually share documents. Any documents that are shared within these environments or, or stored in those environments can be shared uh, with others internally or externally based on how things are configured, and I'll talk about that. And then you can also very easily create a survey. Uh, and this I think is, is very nice. It will create a survey using Excel uh, on the back end, uh, actually using Excel online, but then you can pull it down into your local Excel and, and manipulate and do what you need with the data based on uh, the survey that you created. So with that, I'm going to go uh, back to uh, desktop sharing uh, and quickly demonstrate these functions. So this is my document library here. Uh, uh, note, remember, I'm Karen. Uh, document library within my OneDrive for Business where I can store documents. I can have them up here. I can also synchronize them to my local machine if need be. Uh, and you'll see there's documents up here, Office, variety of Office documents, uh, PDF documents, and so on. I can view these documents uh, right within uh, the web browser itself in Excel Online. Uh, as you can see right here, that same document in Excel Online. Uh, and I can even edit it in Excel Online. Uh, and then of course the next step is being able to share. So if I have this document here, uh, and I actually go to the version that I've opened up in my local copy, if I go to the backstage area, I can see here that I've opened it from that shared location. It's on my OneDrive. If I go to share, I can now share this with people. And it could be internal people. It could be anyone out on the Internet uh, if I want to, uh, quickly and easily. Or I can just get a generic sharing link. Uh, so I can hit, sit here and create a link, and it will create a URL. This one in particular has view only rights, or I can have it have edit rights right within this UI. Uh, so I can do it in Excel. I can also set up the sharing uh, in the web UI. So I have a variety of ways of doing that. Uh, and then finally, creating a survey. Uh, and I'm going to go through this uh, real quick. But if, uh, if I click on New here uh, within my uh, web environment, my OneDrive for Business, you'll notice one of the items is an Excel survey. I could choose Excel survey. And I'll call this one, sir, uh, of course I have to spell correctly, Survey Demo. Click OK. It will actually automatically uh, generate uh, the survey. And then it creates this survey form. So I could start populating this. Volunteer sign up form. I can put a description here. Thanks for assistance. <clears throat> and then you can uh, enter a series of questions. So I can say uh, name. Uh, have a subtitle if need be. Uh, say if it's required. Uh, subtitle, I'll say first and last. Hit Done, and I'll add one more real quick here. Uh, and say, how many hours are you available? <coughs> say it has to be a number, required, fixed decimal, no decimal places, hit Done. So I've just created quickly a survey. If I wanted to uh, see what it looks like, I click Save and View. And this is what it will look like uh, when, it, when I send the URL uh, uh, to somebody. If I click on Share Survey, it will actually give me that link. And what I'm going to do is go on to another machine uh, and actually access that survey. Demo test, how many hours are you available? Three, hit Submit. I'll hit Close here, and you'll notice I was on a completely different machine, uh, not logged in, and it already populated uh, live. It actually updated live within this spreadsheet. Now I can take as this spreadsheet gets populated, uh, I can of course uh, continue to use it in Excel online, but uh, I could turn around and open it in Excel and use the full functionality of the desktop product uh, as need be to start manipulating and working with the data. With that, I'm going to jump back to our presentation uh, and talk about uh, quickly about some of the advanced capabilities that do exist uh, in respect to uh, Excel 2013. <clears throat> so uh, in the term self-service BI has come into play, powerful self-service. And you may have also heard of an offering uh, from Microsoft called Power BI, and this kind of works in concert with that. There's been some things added to the Excel 2013 platform uh, that, a lot, that provides you with a lot more power than used to be there. A lot of this used to be more SQL-based. One of them is Power Query. 
uh, being able to actually do queries against uh, both internal and external data sources uh, quickly and easily, and then take that data and transform it and shape it based on what you need, create a bit pivot table and so on out of it uh, using uh, Power Pivot. Uh, which the next screen actually talks to. So you can actually create relationships between different sheets and different data uh, with Excel now. Uh, you know, and this is again something that was definitely more focused on, um, uh, on the SQL side of the house historically, but we brought that power down to Excel to help enable people to have much more power uh, to be able to create a much more extensive uh, uh, database uh, storage and, and, and uh, visualizations, uh, probably the most important part uh, with Excel natively. Power View uh, is another function, uh, and you'll notice power in all of these names. Uh, but being able to uh, take that data that you've now uh, consumed and analyzed and create visualizations that go far beyond even just basic charts. Uh, these can be very interactive visualizations where you can double click uh, on different aspects of the data and have it automatically filtered down on, the, on those particular portions of data. And then you can turn around and share these views in a, in a, in a dashboard type of scenario using Office 365 for Power BI. Uh, and making it available to people that may not be nor the ordinary people that would access the data, but you know could always have been be could have benefited from accessing the data, uh, but they and you didn't want to give them access to the full data uh, as it exists because it was way beyond what they need. So you can you can control what they view, what they have access to, and what they can actually uh, manipulate, uh, and then use to help make uh, what they're doing more efficient uh, in their day to day work. And then lastly, uh, the, the other uh, pretty slick, powerful tool uh, is Power Map. Power Map uh, is a true uh, integration of Bing technology in concert with Excel uh, and taking a spreadsheet that may have a variety of data on it, including ge geological data, uh, and then automatically producing an interactive map that you can even create a movie of um, that, that you can then share with others or during presentations uh, to, to get a, a real true um, uh, visual look at uh, data that's associated with, uh, with a, a, a map or, or, or geography and so on. Uh, we've seen lots of uh, neat uh, looks of how this could uh, be utilized. So how do you guys all, uh, get ready yourselves uh, with a lot of this uh, information? Uh, I've uh, basically taken a lot of the things that I've done earlier through the different components and, and tried to put links. And this is in the, uh, the PowerPoint that I understand everybody can download. Uh, I think you received an email this morning that had a link to download it. And I would imagine you may get a follow-up on one as well. Uh, with these, because these are all live links uh, to different areas and, and ways of getting started, showing the shortcuts that I talked about early on, uh, showing some of the more powerful capabilities, how to share documents, how to build the surveys. Uh, and and all the way up to the doing uh, the, the, the things in Power BI that I talked about a moment ago. There wasn't nearly enough time to go through the Power BI functions uh, from a demo standpoint today. Uh, but this Getting Started Guide uh, is extensive and it's a self-training uh, tool that will guide you through uh, creating and, and starting to use a lot of the new Power BI functionalities that are part of, uh, a part of uh, Excel uh, 2013. So with that, I believe I'm going to hand it back over to Becky. Terrific. Thank you so much for that. I know we zipped through a lot of content quickly. So uh, just keep in mind yes. you'll get this recording later on that people can go through at whatever pace they'd like and pause it whenever they need. So before we move into Q&A, I know we've got a lot of questions we've been trying to answer in the chat. I want to go ahead and just talk about how you can request Office donations. So for those of you who are either not on it currently uh, using something else or would like to upgrade to the latest versions, if you are a 501c3 nonprofit, you can request Office donations through TechSoup's programs uh, with Microsoft. Um, and we have the Office Professional Plus 2013, Office Standard 2013, Office for Mac 2011 Standard Edition. And these are the admin fees listed are per license. Um, and so you can upgrade if you uh, – these donations are fil fulfilled through Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center. And I mention that because these are volume licenses. So you request them and they are electronically delivered to you. So it's not like you get a boxed product 
in the mail shipped to you. You would request them. If you are eligible, you receive the, the confirmation with your license keys, and you go into the Volume Licensing Service Center and install. And that happens pretty quickly, especially if you are already in TechSoup system as an eligible organization. Um, and so I included some info here with a link to the Volume Licensing Guide, how to get started and how it works. Um, and I also want to mention that if you have requested um, Office through TechSoup in the past two years, that you may be eligible to upgrade for no cost um, through the software assurance benefit that comes with all of the products donated through Microsoft's program with TechSoup, with very few exceptions. So if you have Office 2010 and you have requested that within the past two years, you can go right to that Volume Licensing Service Center and upgrade for free right away uh, to the latest version. Um, you can also access Office Multi-Language Packs. Other benefits of Software Assurance include uh, the ability to allow you to install using your same license Actually, I think Todd, could you go ahead and mute your line? I'm hearing lots of typing in the background all of a sudden. Thank you. Um, so if you have it installed at your office, and you would also like to install it on your home computer, there's a home, use, home office program that allows you to install it on your home computer, provided you continue working for that organization. Um, and I believe it's a $10 fee that gives you the ability to extend the use of your license for that product onto your home machine. So it's a great program. Software Assurance comes with all of our Office products. And it also includes free e-learning courses. So I linked to where you can search for which kind of courses are available for free through your Software Assurance benefits. So if you are able to get the donation of Microsoft products, which is now open to faith-based organizations as well, um, you can access e-learning courses. And I think they had 21 hours worth of trainings on Excel 2013. You can also look at 2010, 20, 2007. Um, I think they may have even had 2007 or, or 2003. Um, and I saw that there were Office Online trainings and Office 365 trainings in there too. So great resources available. If you are uh, on a computer that's 32 or 64 bit and you need to access a different uh, bit version of the software, or if you have a, com a software that's not compatible uh, with the latest version, you can also use the Volume Licensing Service Center to roll back to a prior version. So if you upgrade to 2013 on 7 out of 8 machines and you find that you need one to still work with some mission critical software that doesn't work with the latest version, you can go ahead and roll it back. And it's no additional cost to do that. And you can also access all of those multi-language packs. So if you have people on your staff that are Spanish speakers or Chinese speakers or Arabic speakers, they have all of these different language packs available. And I listed a link to the Volume Licensing Service Center benefits. Lastly, before we move into questions, um, Office 365. So Office 365 comes uh, – you can get a free trial of that through Microsoft. And it becomes a free, free product longer term uh, once you've met the eligibility requirements, which TechSoup helps verify that you are um, actually eligible. So I have a link on the next page to show you how to access that if you are interested in going straight to Office 365. Um, it includes a cloud-based Office Online access, hosted email, link which is our, the online conferencing and IM program, and SharePoint which is to, to give you sites and storage. Um, and it also – there is an option for installed professional Office. And that's a good option if you – uh, have more licenses than what you can get through TechSoup's donation programs, or if you are not eligible for Office through TechSoup's donation programs. And it also provides access from up to 15 of your devices per license, meaning you can access Office 365 from your cell phone, your PC, your laptop at work, and it's up to 5 mobile devices, 5 tablets, and 5 PCs per license, which is really fantastic. Um, I have links to the Office 365 Options Comparison, how to request that free trial, and then Office 365 FAQ. And then we have a short video tutorial that you can look at later that um, 
shows you how to get through that process. It's just a couple of quick forms, and usually within um, you can start using it right away, and then usually within a couple of weeks of doing it, you'll get an email confirming that you are in fact eligible and your account is full-fledged, no longer a trial. So let's get us into Q&A. We've got a lot here. Let's see, we have um, lots of questions. So for folks asking about Focus on 2010 um, and whether or not some of these features apply, because we have so many people on different versions on the line, it's really hard to parse out which features are available in which versions. Um, the links that, that um, Todd showed a little while ago, I'm going to just pop back to that page, has some resources here for those of you who are on 2010 or 2013. If you do a quick search, there's lots of shortcut uh, documents like this that are available for 20, 2007 and 2003 even. Um, so we included some of those here to help you get access to trainings that may not be for this 2013 version. Um, but it's a really mixed bag. Some of the features that Todd demonstrated are also applicable in 2010. It's just hard to parse it out for the purposes of this webinar with 500 people on. Todd, do you want to respond yeah, to that at all? Yeah, I <clears throat> yeah, I was going to just I concur on the same thing. I, I tried to definitely uh, have some at the beginning that definitely works with both. Uh, some people have been asking if you can open up uh, t spreadsheets made in 2013 with previous releases, which you can. Uh, you can uh, um, if you've got the current service packs. Uh, or with 2007, I believe you can download the, the uh, conversion or the, uh, the viewer tool to actually have it open. So you can view, if you create them in this version, uh, you can view them in older versions uh, as well as vice versa. Some people were asking about uh, uh, Power BI. And one thing I apologize on is I, did, I didn't, um, didn't say what BI meant. It's business intelligence. Um, shame on me. Uh, so Power, Power BI is basically a, a, in regards to business intelligence, which is you know, the, the visualization and making the data more accessible to uh, a lot, uh, others within the organization. And in respect to that, a lot of the tools that I showed uh, within the client itself, actually all, all of the tools on the slides uh, where we showed Excel, uh, the Power Map and the, the, the Power View and so on, uh, those are, are all available in Excel um, natively, in Excel under the professional. So you need Excel uh, under the Office Professional or Office 365 Pro Plus. With both of those, you can uh, do everything that I showed there. There is an Office 365 for Power BI offering. Um, that's the part that allows you to uh, uh, enable and share those more complex uh, spreadsheets that may have uh, links to lots of different data points and different back-end systems to uh, people via a browser or mobile devices. Uh, so that, 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 so I just want to make sure everybody understands that they can actually use, um, as far as on the desktop client itself, Excel, everything that, I, that was on the slides you can do just using the Excel as part uh, of, op of uh, Office 365 Pro Plus or uh, Office Professional itself. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, we have some questions about Office 365, particularly around the cost. So in that link that I shared that just talked about the different comparison, um, the E1 version, which is the, the basic version, um, is totally free. So there is no cost to that. It's a full-on donation through Microsoft, which is fantastic and super generous of them. Um, if you need to have uh, not only the cloud versions of Office, but you need to have installed Office Professional, and either you are not able to request it through TechSoup's donation programs because you are not eligible, or you need more licenses than what you can request. The E3 version is $4.50 per month per user to um, have the Office Professional installed option as well. So, and that yeah. helps with the cost. So if you have 200 users um, and you are able to get 50 licenses to have it installed through TechSoup's donation programs with Microsoft, and you need 150 other licenses if you are a bigger organization, then that E3 option would be the 450 per month per user, um, which is still significantly less than what the retail value is to go out to uh, Office Max and by Office Professional 2013, you are looking at $400 per license on average. So just keep that in mind that, the, that all of this is considered a donation, and so there may be a small fee if you need some additional upgrades. And I know that they either very recently or very 
in the near future, I think it already happened, um, also launched a version for um, Office 365 Small Business. And that is on that comparison page too. I don't know offhand what the costs are for that. Yeah, I can add, add to that too as far as, uh, and, and you know, it can be confusing, but there's the E1 and the E3. Now, the, both, of, both of these include not just Office, and of course the first one, the E1, does not include the Office client, but it includes Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Link Online. So, and many may, if you're not aware of it, I, 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 as I understand you guys did, uh, TechSoup did a session on Office 365 specifically uh, previously, so there, there may be a recorded uh, uh, information session about that. But the E3, some of the, some of the other things that E3 adds, which may be important to the folks that are worried about compliance scenarios, in terms of Exchange Online, it also adds full e-discovery and unlimited size of archiving, uh, which can be pretty important. E E1's uh, Exchange Online uh, does not include uh, unlimited size ar uh, archiving. Uh, and there are a few yeah, other differences great. as far as from an enterprise standpoint. I just want to make sure that's, that's noted. That's great. Yep, and that's, that's a good point. Um, people asking about the differences between Office 365, we can go ahead and include a link to some of those other events that we've done. We've actually done four webinars on Office 365. One was just a week or so ago. So we can send that out so you can learn more about that in particular if you uh, are interested. And like I said, I believe that the small business for nonprofits um, either has just become available in the last two weeks or that it's going to be available in the next couple of weeks. So um, keep an eye out for that if it's not already listed. Um, I'm told on the back end that it is delayed, but it is coming soon. <laughs> so like I said, look at that comparison page because it will uh, update and have those, that option once it becomes available. Um, let's see, we had a question from Fernando asking, is uh, Office 365 on iOS or Android? Does it work for those mobile devices as well? And I believe the answer is yes for that. There's an iPad yes, version. Uh, well, when, when you say Office 365, the Office 365 subscription uh, gives you access to Office uh, to be able to utilize Office for iPad in full edit mode. There is Office for iPhone uh, available today, and that's, uh, that's, that's no charge. Office for iPad, you can view documents at no charge, but if you want edit, that's when you would need to have an Office 365 subscription that includes Office as well, so like the E3. Uh, but then you would have uh, full capability to edit on Office for iPad. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up because we are almost at the top of the hour. But a couple of people have asked about licensing, and when we talk about licensed users, that is each individual staff person. So for example, if you have Office 2013 and you're installing that on seven different machines, each of those is a separate license to request. If you are requesting Office 365 for seven staff people, each of those is a separate license. Um, and so when you go through the process of requesting on their trial form, you would request how many seats you want or how many licenses you want at that point. Each of those users for Office 365 would be able to access that, that one license from up to 15 devices, so up to 5 mobile devices. So if you have a work cell phone and a home cell phone, and a work laptop, and a home laptop, and a PC in your office. You can access it from all of those, but it's still going to be that one licensed user's account. Yeah, and it's, it's probably right. the last thing I'll say about that uh, specifically sure. is it also includes the Office 365 like E3 includes Office for Mac as well. So you can have one machine running Office for Mac and one machine running Office Pro Plus uh, and be uh, covered under the same license. That's a terrific point. And I apologize a little bit to some of the Mac users that have joined us today that we didn't spend a whole lot of time on Mac. Um, we will try and find a couple of resources to point you to shortcuts and tips as well for those of you on, on Office 2011 for Mac. Um, I want to just focus on this slide for just a second to let you know that if you have questions we didn't have time to answer, please go to TechSoup.org slash community. That's our community forums where you can post your questions and get answers from experts and consultants uh, to help you make the best decisions on the software selections for your organization, and also how to use them. Uh, I want to just mention before we wrap up that we have a number of upcoming webinars. Uh, we do these just about weekly. So on June 5th, next Thursday, we'll be discussing content strategies for mobile uh, and using mobile in your organization. 
Uh, how to get technology donations through TechSoup is on 612. So if you are new to TechSoup and want to know more about our donation programs, go ahead and join us for that one. And then a couple of other ones also on mobile that are coming up that you are welcome to join us at. Thank you so much Todd for taking the time today to share your expertise. We really appreciate it. And I'd also like to thank on the back end Patricia, Ali, and Kevin for helping to answer your questions. Thank you also to our webinar sponsor ReadyTalk for giving us the use of this platform to present these webinars to you on a weekly basis. We hope you'll join us again and take a moment to complete the post-event survey that pops up on your screen. Uh, it often opens up in a new tab. So go ahead and look for that and tell us how we did today so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.